One of the few adults we know in the foreign policy realm is Tulsi Gabbard, the former member of Congress from Hawaii. We're happy to have her join us tonight. Congressman, thanks so much thanks for coming on. So it's, without even going into the, what they told us was Russian disinformation is actually true, how concerned are you that Tori and Newland, who's overseeing this war, has just admitted there are unsecure bioagents, dangerous bioagents, in Ukraine? I'm extremely concerned, as should be every American and everyone in the world. Uh, the seriousness of this situation really can't be overstated. First of all, she didn't say no when she was asked yeah. by Marco Rubio about there being biological or chemical weapons in Ukraine. So uh, if, if there were or are, obviously that would be a, a violation of the Biological Weapons Convention. Uh, number two, she, they're, they're categorically been trying to hide this, as you've laid out very, very well. And then once they were found out, rather than saying, hey, you know what, this is a, a critical emergency, it's a crisis, we have these pathogens in the midst of a war zone, yes. not just in one location, but between 20 and 30 labs in Ukraine, We've, this is a global crisis, we're going to take action immediately. This is how a responsible leader would react, given the crisis of this moment. But instead, what did they do? Her response to, to Senator Rubio was immediately start pointing fingers. We're going to preemptively start the blame game should anything exactly. happen to these pathogens and, and who knows what is going on in these labs. Before anything bad happens, just say, you know what, it's the bad guys. It's the bad guys who are responsible for this. It's, I, it is the height of irresponsibility, their response to this, the fact that they're covering it up, the fact that they aren't doing really what needs to be done. Because if, unless this war in Ukraine ends right now, ends tonight, we face a, a very real certainty that one or more of these labs will be compromised, will be breached, and it won't just be the people of Ukraine who are impacted. We could face another cri global crisis when you look at a pathogen that could be released. We just went through this with COVID. Uh, we can't have forgotten this already. And once again, Agencies in the U.S. government, without our knowledge, are secretly funding research that, you know, imperils the world, and no one is ever punished for it. So, well, speaking of no one ever punished, we, I wanted to get your reaction to this. 27 foreign policy heavyweights just signed yeah. an open letter calling for what they call a, quote, limited no-fly zone over Ukraine. Some of the people who signed it include former NATO allied supreme commander Phil Breedlove, U.S. ambassador to Ukraine William Taylor, former U.S. ambassador to NATO Kurt Volker, et cetera, et cetera. What exactly are they proposing, and is it a wise idea, do you think? Uh, it is not. Just, just one last thing on, on the danger of these, of course. these labs that the U.S. is funding, not only in Ukraine and around the world. They need to be shut down immediately. They need yes. to be shut down immediately. They are insecure. They are posing a threat to the world. They need to be shut down immediately. Uh, on, on the no-fly zone that's being uh, proposed and encouraged by these so-called foreign policy experts, look, they're, they're trying to act tough. Tucker, they're trying to say, you know, we've got to do something. And, and I, I get it. There is so much suffering that we're seeing on our televisions all day and all night. And, and I get that the American people are frustrated because we want to see this end. Instead of our leaders doing the responsible thing and saying, OK, let's do our best to try to facilitate a negotiated outcome to actually end this conflict, a window of opportunity that President Zelensky opened up, you know, what, just 24, 36 hours ago. Instead of doing that, they're focused on, hey, let's just do something, look tough, enact a no-fly zone, which would not help the Ukrainian people. It would make things worse. It's not going to help the American people. It'll make things worse. It'll drastically escalate this crisis and put our pilots directly against Russian pilots, putting us in conflict at war with Russia, the other nuclear armed power, pushing us, shoving us towards this brink of, of nuclear catastrophe and nuclear war that, that would destroy the world. Yeah, and Ukraine. You know, save Ukraine by destroying and Ukraine. It. So give me exactly. And Iraq, Libya, Syria, the, the list goes on and on. We've, we've got to learn from these lessons and, and stop this madness. So we're just getting this from the State Department. This is a tweet, and I want to, I'm reading this cold, but I want to run it by you. The United States does not have chemical or biological weapons labs in Ukraine. Then they put up a graphic that read, the U.S. is in full compliance with its obligations under the Biological Weapons Convention is not develop or possess biological weapons anywhere. I can see about four holes in that. So if you were 
I mean, so they're telling us they don't own any bio labs in Ukraine. I don't remember. I mean, one of the tells to lying is when you answer a question no one asked. I don't think anyone's suggesting exactly. the U.S. government owns bio labs there, right? That's right. That's right. But, but you pointed to evidence, and we've seen through different parts of the world. We saw in China uh, how the U.S. is funding this research or these labs to the tune of hundreds around the world. Why? That question yeah. has never been asked or answered by them. Say, why, why is it? Why, why is this research something that, that is so critical, not done in secure labs within the United States? Uh, why is this research being outsourced? Um, there, there are so many different questions here, and all of it points back to really the risk that this is posing. Again, this is something that is fresh in our memories. And if, if they have nothing to hide, why are they trying so hard to hide it? Well, they said, well, they've already admitted it. I mean, the Under Secretary of State, Under Secretary of State, just admitted it under oath yesterday. So, like, right. let's let's That's not right. let them pretend that this is like we're carrying Putin's water again or something. They're such liars. Ugh. I appreciate having yeah. an honest person on this show. It's such a relief. Tulsi Gabbard, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.